Hey everybody, Cole here with Classic Mini DIY and it is finally time to install some turbocharged Classic Mini parts. So, stay tuned for that. All right, as I said, it is time to install some turbocharged Classic Mini parts on my A-Series turbocharged engine. Well, it's not really turbocharged, I guess, until the turbo goes on it, but semantics. It has been a little while since I have posted a video, and I'm sorry about that. Um, the nature of these big builds is that it's not really like, okay, so I have my intercooler and I have my exhaust manifold. I have all of these things in my possession now, but it takes a little bit of time for a lot of these little small bits and pieces to get into my possession um, and then also to get them installed. You have your intercooler here, for example, which is from the car kitchen, in case you couldn't figure that out. and. He has crafted up all sorts of custom parts for me, which I'm going to show the install here very shortly. But it's crazy how much little tiny items can start to delay the whole project. So you have things like AN fittings that go on this turbo, or little uh, adapter plates that come off of breather locations. Various things like this um, can actually delay the build pretty substantially. In fact, I have had to do a lot of custom measuring, custom sorting for some of my turbo oil feed lines and oil return lines. And as you can imagine, without those lines, you can't test the engine because you can't run and test oil pressure. And because of that, you know, it's this like cascading line of things that delay stuff. But with all of that said, it is finally time to start installing these things to get my engine closer to getting started. I don't think that we're gonna be starting the engine today, um, and I don't know, and we may or may not be able to get some oil pressure. Um, it depends on, as I said, little small parts and whether they get here in time. Now, for those of you who have been following me on Instagram, at ClassicMiniDIY59, if you wanna follow me, I post all sorts of kind of like early access and early views to a lot of these parts. And if you are a patron, you saw this stuff even earlier than on my Instagram. But I have been working with Alex over at the car kitchen to craft up an intercooler kit, a front mount intercooler kit for my Classic Mini. Now you guys are gonna see how this mounts here in just a little while, but what an amazing piece of engineering here that he has put together. Um, the inlet being on this side here, outlet going up and over the engine, and all of this stuff was custom measured for the Mini. The same thing can be said for the exhaust manifold system. This is made by Fusion Fabrications. Now he has two different manifold types that you can get on your turbocharged minis. Um, one of them is the rear mount turbo setup, um, basically positioning your turbo on the back side of your engine below where the carburetor sits. So it's all very compact. A lot of people do this option and go with Fusion Fab because his manifold allows you to install that turbo with very little modification required. In some situations, you may not even need to modify the bulkhead at all. It kind of depends on the turbo you're using and all of that stuff. So I won't get too in depth with that. In my case, I really like the look of a side mount turbo. So he built up this beautiful looking spaghetti manifold here. I call it a spaghetti manifold because it looks like noodles, it's really cool. But you have your three exhaust ports all running in, in the spaghetti formation to collect at your turbo. Um, this is the hot side of the turbo, and then that's what spools it up. And that will sit on the side of my engine right above my clutch housing. You guys are gonna see that here shortly too. But the last thing I wanna show you before we get into the B-roll and you guys get to enjoy the actual installation process is this plenum chamber. Now, this is a custom plenum chamber. This was also done by Fusion Fabrication. Blow off valve output here, inlet is here, and then you have your pressure takeoff for the rising rate um, pressure regulator for my fuel. 
And then obviously the turbo carb with a manifold that was sent to me from Steve Blakemore or Turbo Cooper Sport. Um, this has been ported, um, so it's very nice and pretty and smooth inside there. Um, and then modified with a few sensors, which I'll also talk about here very soon. For those of you who are curious, this is what a factory turbo plenum looks like. Um, this was on the ERA and the Metro turbo engines, the A-series engines, where your inlet was coming from the turbo that was below the actual carburetor. So it would sit like this. Very cool little setup. Um, I got one just in case I didn't, I had any sort of fitment issues, but um, I am not going to be using this one. Now, before we get into the installation and everything, I do want to mention a couple things. One is thank you so much to all of my patrons who have been supporting me and being extremely patient with me while I have been getting all this stuff set up. We've been chatting a great deal on my private Discord channel and uh, keeping you guys up to date. But again, thank you so much for your patience on this. And thank you again for supporting the channel. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel and supporting big projects like this, Head over to my Patreon link, it's down in my description, and you get all sorts of really cool benefits, perks, and access to a live Discord chat where you can ask me questions, but you can also ask questions of the community, and everyone is really, really wonderful, really helpful, and uh, we've got a great bunch of folks in there. Also, if you guys have not seen yet, I have launched a ton of new products on the merch store, and it's kind of evolved past just being a merch store at this point. We sell classic mini parts, um, we sell brake lines, clutch lines, um, all sorts of really cool custom leather work from folks here in the US, US made leather shipped directly to your door. We also have very cool shirts and posters. The, the posters made by a wonderful artist who is a friend of mine, Lewis. If you have not followed him yet, check out the Instagram handle showing up below me here on the screen. Um, he has incredible artwork and all of this is split 50-50 with him. So I show it on my store and you guys will be helping to support an artist making some really incredible artwork. But with all of that out of the way, let's get to the exciting part of actually installing this turbocharger, intercooler, manifold, carburetor, everything on this classic mini.
folks, there it is. The turbocharger is installed, the intercooler is installed, and really all of the ancillary parts are now installed in the car. And to top it all off, I have oil pressure. This is really, really exciting, and it's a huge milestone in this build. What it means is that aside from a few little bits and bobs, it's going to be startup time here very soon. My plan is that the next video on this turbo build is all going to be about first start. So basically, I am going to go over how the ECU works, how to get that dialed in and ready to roll, um, get my carburetor tuned up, get everything connected so that we can start this up and, well, give it its first test drive, and then of course, go through the tuning process. Now, I posted this poll on Instagram to see what you guys wanted me to do, whether you wanted to, to like top over overview of this stuff or individual questions, and you guys actually wanted all the details about this build. So this next segment of this episode is gonna be all about the details, how everything is connected. We're gonna start at the turbo over here and we're gonna work our way through all of the different components here. So if you like all the technical details, you're gonna love this next part. So to start off, we have a GT1752 turbocharger. This turbocharger is an OEM aftermarket replacement for a Saab 9.3. Now, I've got a k and filter here, which I know it doesn't look like it fits under the hood, but it does. It does fit under the hood. It's magic. And what happens is as air is coming into this turbo here, this is your intake, air goes down underneath the turbo through this front mount intercooler, up this route here, and into this plenum. This plenum is something that was made by Fusion Fabrications, and he put this together for me. It's got the inlet on this side here, very similar to the stock turbo OEM setup. And then what happens, air is driven through the carburetor. And one of the questions I get a lot about this carb is whether or not it is a turbo carb or if it's a standard carb that was modified. This was a turbo carburetor from the factory. So all, all of this is an OEM factory turbo carb. Um, I didn't modify one. I actually bought this. Uh, I will post a link to the video where I talk in detail about this carburetor. That should be popping up in the corner. But the air then drives this carb to lift and air goes into the engine, combusts, goes back out the exhaust manifold on the side here and into the hot side of the turbo. And that's what spools up the turbo and then starts to generate boost. After that, it drives down the downpipe on the back side here and out the back of the car, just like any other turbo setup. Now the exhaust manifold and the downpipe were made by Fusion Fabrications as well. They are both stainless steel. I have not treated them with anything, although I probably will ceramic coat them in the future. For right now, I have wrapped them with the exhaust manifold wrap. Um, I didn't do it on the manifold itself, but for the downpipe and the exhaust underneath the car, that's all wrapped. Um, not the whole thing, but right in the front here. Now, I am running a two inch Manaflow exhaust. This is something that is not a stock size for a Mini. Normally it's 1.178, I think is the normal size, or 1.75. Don't, don't quote me on that. You'll have to check Manaflow's website, but it is a larger exhaust to ensure that I can get as much boost out of this turbo as I can because a lot of the limitations on this A-series engine is really around how fast it can expel the exhaust. And if the exhaust can't get out the back of the car fast enough, your turbo is going to be limited in how quickly and how much it can spool, and you start to lose out on the uh, ability to generate boost. Now, a few people have also asked me, why did I go with a carburetor instead of a fully mapped ECU? The reason I'm not doing a complete fuel injection system is due to the ease of tuning here in the United States. I simply do not have people around the US who are comfortable enough with the ECU setups that are available for minis. And the custom units like the Haltech units require a good bit of configuration that I'm just not quite comfortable with yet. So for right now, I'm doing something called an ignition only ECU, which means that my ECU is only controlling when the spark plugs fire and all of the advance around that spark plug firing order and timing and everything like that. 
So all of the fueling is done old school with the carb, which is gonna work great. This is the factory style that was on these Turbo A series from like the Metro Turbo and the ERA, all used a turbo carb. It's perfect, it'll be fine. Um, it'll work really, really well. So what that meant is I needed to add a couple sensors to my system here. One is a trigger position sensor, which is measuring when the engine is at top dead center so that the ECU knows when to fire those spark plugs and how much advance or retard that it needs in the whole timing system. And then additionally, I have something called a MAP sensor, which is a manifold atmosphere pressure. I believe what, that's what that MAP sensor or the MAP acronym stands for. And what that does is it measures manifold pressure so that my ECU can manage and adjust timing based on the amount of boost that the engine is generating. Um, I'm gonna go into this in a lot more detail in a future video. Um, I am planning to bring this up to a tuner up in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, who has agreed to help me get that ignition map really, really dialed in. That said, I will be sharing the ignition map I'm using. I already have a link to that. That is in my description right now. Can check that out but i really want to make clear that this ignition map is going to be targeted to my car it is not something that's going to be plug and play for everybody so please please get it mapped by a professional because if you put that ecu into any car you can cause catastrophic failure if your car is not set up properly so it's meant as a reference not as a direct swap but that brings me into the ignition system in a little bit more detail. Again, I already mentioned that I have a video on this detailing how the whole ignition system works, but um, I am using a coil pack, which is mounted up on the top of the bulkhead here with my spark plug leads coming up over here. What that means is I've completely removed the distributor. There's no distributor on this system because it's not necessary anymore. Now, those with a keen eye probably also noticed that my brake lines are different, um, my coolant lines are different, and the reason I'm doing this is for, well, there's a lot of accommodation that has to happen for this turbo. So the brake lines and the clutch lines first are heat sleeved and custom stainless lines from HEL. Um, these can be picked up on my site, not these specific ones with the heat sleeving. However, if you wanted to pick up custom lines for your car, um, or if you do want some with heat sleeving, shoot me a message and I can help work something out for you. Um, but these are left-hand drive lengths of lines run so that they are away from the heat generating components here, but they are also heat sleeved in a fiberglass heat wrap, which is, uh, very nice. It's all done professionally by HEL. So my clutch line runs over here and like down underneath the, the turbo and then my brake lines run up out of the way and down to a special T-pipe um, out of the way of the heat generating elements. Now in addition to the hydraulic lines, I also needed to do some different things with the coolant lines. I have one right here and one down here. What I'm doing is piping in the turbo into the coolant system. Um, this is a water-cooled turbo, so it, it does have two ports, one for inlet, one for outlet, and that is taking coolant off the top of the heater here. So coolant passing through the head. This is an 8AN fitting. It goes down underneath into the turbo housing, into the hot side of the turbo, and then out this top side and down into the heater, and then through the heater and back into the engine full circulation. Um, this is something that you can add to these GT17s, Depending on the turbo you have, you may not have a water-cooled system. This turbo is also oil-fed, which means that it needs lubrication. In order to keep that turbine lubricated and from you know, having any sort of damage caused to it, the turbo line is pressurized on the top side into a banjo fitting in the turbo. That goes through, lubricates, and then it is gravity-driven and out the bottom of the turbo into the block where the old distributor used to be. During the B-roll a little bit ago, you probably saw me screwing in that 10 a in fitting um, directly into the block. That is the turbo oil drain. And then right above that is the turbo oil feed, which is coming off the same takeoff, which was previously used for your oil pressure light switch or a oil pressure gauge. And all of that was relocated to that giant squid octopus looking thing that was my oil filter relocation bracket. 
Now, as you can imagine, this big, nice intercooler that mounts up front here, well, it takes up a lot of room. And so as a result, I had to relocate the alternator and the oil filter. Both of those have been moved down below the intercooler. And on the right side is the alternator that has just been moved down, but the belt is still in the same position, driving that alternator. And then I moved the oil filter over to the left and then flipped it upside down. Unfortunately, I couldn't keep it upright. The space for all of the hosing and all that stuff just didn't accommodate it, didn't allow me to do that. So oil filter changes, gonna be kind of messy in this car, but small price to pay for having this buddy right here. So on that oil filter relocation bracket, what I'm doing there is I have two AN fittings, one for the inlet, one for the outlet, plumbed into the standard oil feed line and, and system for the Mini, just moved a little bit. And then I also have my oil pressure gauge and my oil pressure light all tapped in there as well. So all of it goes to that relocation bracket, keeps it out of the way and, uh, and still operating. Now, there are a few things that have not yet been done. And some of those will take place off camera because they're just too small to mention or they are going to be in that first start video. Namely, one of the most important things if for most people with a turbo setup, a blow off valve. This blow off valve was provided to me by Go Fast Bits. You might've seen them on Mighty Car Mods. It is a very, very reputable company who makes some incredible, incredible turbo related parts, boost controllers, blow off valves, all sorts of stuff. This blow off valve, which I will also be linking in my description below, um, will go right here. And we'll, be, and we'll have a feed to tell it when to blow off. This blow off valve is a dual blow off valve, so it can either be a diverter valve, which means it goes back into the exhaust, or an atmospheric blow off valve. In the US, there are no rules around which one I can do, so for right now, it's just gonna be all atmosphere. Um, if it gets mega annoying at some point, I can always add a bung to take off here. This is unscrewable and you can add a diverter valve, which would go into the exhaust system and would help quiet it down a little bit. Um, or you can do kind of a hybrid model where you do half and half. Um, pretty cool stuff. This is a really, really neat unit. All of that said, for right now, it's just gonna be atmospheric. Hopefully it doesn't drive me too crazy. The only other thing that I wanna mention about this setup that's a little bit different than um, you know a lot of different cars. I mean, there's a lot of custom stuff going on in here. But there were two takeoffs you might have seen when I was putting in my downpipe. One of those is an AFR gauge. Obviously, I want to be able to read and see how rich or lean my car is. The second was something you may not have seen before. It's something called a PCV collector. It's a setup that is um, often seen on Volkswagens, um, some kind of muscle cars, and various cars throughout the years. Basically, what it is is all of your crankcase pressure, um, so all of that blow-by that might get around your pistons, it's generated on just about every engine. Um, on the A-Series, they do tend to breathe a little bit more than a modern engine might. And so I have two vents, one on the timing cover, one on the back of the block. Can't show them to you, they're very, very hard to show. Um, but both of those are going into my inner wing on this side over here, on the left side of the car and going into an under fender oil catch can, which was made for me by uh, Paul over at HRE. You've probably seen our live streams. Those two are going into the oil catch, and then there is an exhaust or an outlet on that oil catch can. Um, all of these are 10 AN lines, just for reference. And then that exhaust line is going and getting plumbed directly into my exhaust pipe after the AFR gauge. And this PCV collector does something, what it does is it actually creates negative pressure on your crankcase, which is really, really appealing on a turbo setup. blow is happening, you've got boost in your engine, even more blow is happening. And normally all of that is just vented out to the atmosphere, but with this exhaust setup, you're getting a draw in your exhaust. It's got a special valve to, pretend, to prevent it from going back the other direction. And as that pressure is being generated, it's also being sucked out the exhaust and all of that crankcase breather gas that would normally be venting or going somewhere else is all fired out the back of the car. And that creates negative pressure, so it actually will help 
we'll see how much. This is something that is, a, is kind of an experiment on this car. Um, what that does is it will actually help reduce the amount of oil that is getting burned by oil creeping around the pistons and, um, and various other things. It's something that I wanted to experiment with. I don't really know how well it's gonna work. It might not work at all. Um, and in which case I'll just plug the PCB collector and all of this will just go to the oil catch can and be done. So that is a broad overview of everything that's going on in this engine bay now. Um, you also probably saw I have a different radiator now. I finally was able to fit an alloy rad. Um, I talk about that a little bit more in my engine install video, which should be popping up in the corner. But the only other question that I got that I haven't answered so far, um, it was actually the most common question. And of course, you guys probably can guess what it is. How much did all of this cost? And that is pretty much the million dollar question on a lot of these builds. And I am going to be completely transparent with you guys. I don't know the exact value as of filming this, but I have put my Google Sheets spreadsheet link down in my description. I have converted the values from the US dollar to the Euro and pound, so you guys can get some different references on how much this is costing in your own native currency. I include every single part that you guys see here that I bought and needed for this turbo build, um, including internals on the engine, all of it. And you guys will get a great full picture um, of everything that it requires to build something like this. Um, unfortunately, I have a feeling that you guys are probably not gonna like the price. Um, it is not a cheap conversion to do it right, but there's always the kind of best route or the one that will give you the most longevity out of the engine, which in general doesn't always mean the cheapest way to do it. So prepare yourselves. That spreadsheet does have all the links to the products as well. But that is going to wrap up this episode. Um, I think that I've covered everything on the kind of like broad scale, all the little details. There is a million things going on in here. So I'm, if you guys think of something that maybe I didn't answer and you're still curious about, please post those in the comment section below. I really want to help you guys out if you want to tackle a project like this. Um, it's really rewarding, especially once you get everything dialed in the way you want it. Um, although it is not an easy project, it is going to be well worth it if you want to do something like this. And I also want to say another thank you to all of my patrons. If you guys feel like these videos are valuable to you and you maybe want to help support the channel, maybe consider checking out my Patreon and becoming a member. You get some really cool perks, some free stuff, and uh, access to a live Discord chat. Um, which helps me out with the channel and hopefully will provide you guys with a lot of value as you guys tackle projects on your car, whether it's a turbo build or even littler stuff like how do I set the timing or something like that. So thank you again for joining. And until I see you guys on the next episode, you guys know the drill. Enjoy those minis and motor on.